Good morning, hello, and happy Monday. Uh, sorry I couldn't make the uh, the Friday stream, but um, I just couldn't... Uh, I don't know if it was the weather changing or something else. I just tossing and turning all night, couldn't sleep. So it was like, what, midnight or so? That I was like, yeah, this is not going to happen. Not going to be able to wake up at 5. Uh, so I skipped that stream, slept in a little bit, let myself sleep in on the weekend too. Uh, so that way we can be here. And uh, now I can, it's been like, what, four days now? Uh, let's go figure out where we were with the uh, bookstore API. Project root doesn't exist. Um, well, that's a thing. I'm curious about that now. Let's see, what do I have? Oh, you definitely have a project root here. Okay, so I didn't I didn't CD into it correctly. Which is interesting. How about Oh yeah, it just went to my home directory. Well that's not right. There we go. Okay, I need to use um, a relative direct uh, relative path to get in there. Otherwise, I can't find it. Oh, and this actually give it to me. Okay, that apparently is the way to do it for for this too. Nice. Hi, Zilby. Hi. You just ate, so there's no way I'm going to make you run around. And you still have a little bit of food. Um, okay, so let's see. What what are we working on? Test-wise, uh, we are failing at uh, creating an author. Okay, and what failed... Uh, okay, create an author. We assert that the status is there. Oh, and then we expect, okay, to get an author response. Stacking, hello, how are you doing today? He's in the right room uh, on on the screen. I can see his tail. I don't know if he can see his tail on the floor. It would be very small. And it's almost the same color as the floor, too. You can confirm today is Monday. It does feel like a Monday, doesn't it? So that makes sense. Um, all right. So... We're waiting until we get this back. We want you to create an author, but that, okay. So then we have to find this thing. So this is router's author, which, right. Okay, so you're not you're not actually responding with what you're supposed to respond with. Uh, so that would be, that would be the next thing, to create an author. Um, oh, wait a second. I don't have any database type stuff. That's probably what's what we're needing to work on next. Database stuff. So I'm supposed to send, okay, so I create a new author, new random.
This is under types that are ass. Where is where is that? Okay, test types. Okay, so you have it in there. You for I forgot a whole database. I can also confirm today is Monday. Yes, I have forgotten a whole database. I haven't deleted said database yet, but I think that's because I haven't created it. So close enough. We need to find out like what level of Monday it is. Like, are we are we talking about emergency just go back to bed Monday, or is it uh eh, it's it's Monday, but we can we can muddle through it with some caffeine and you know music. <laughs> Alright, so I created a plan for this one too, didn't I? Of what this is gonna look like. Uh I think I think I think I'm gonna turn off Zilby Camp. He's yeah, I think he wandered further away. I think we're gonna want to set up database type stuff. Um do we have a compose file? I do have a compose file. Okay, so we have our, our Postgres database. Let's get Do I even have that running? I do not have that running. And that's something I'm going to want to add in to, to this, uh, this pane here. Probably something down below, right around here somewhere. I can cut check in half, or I can do it to the right of it. I don't know if it matters. Okay, so there's that top one where I have the cargo watch. Then I have my left side where I have cargo test and cargo check. So I'll add another one in here. Uh, and we'll have this name will, oh, sorry, this command will be docker compose up. Yeah, probably just would be a Docker, simple Docker compose up. I wonder if I get, I can get rid of the size now that I have three of them. Oh shoot, and I can't be that. I keep on forgetting that with this one, you have to do like the args thing. I'm not sure how much I like the KDL format. I think I would have preferred YAML. Okay, so let's head back to here and quit out. Okay, there we go. So now we have our Docker file here. We have our cargo run here. I wonder if this should be delayed so I can wait until the, the database is up. Probably, we'll probably need it eventually. And then test running here. Okay, so that, that should be fine. Um, and then we have we have you running here. So um, let's see. Next up, let's uh, let's go ahead and initialize the. Uh, this should have a database already sitting sitting here ready for us. Uh, which means I need to set up our migrations. We are going to do migrations in this course. Uh, we did not do it last time. Last time I just sort of created the database and tables and everything else. 
for everybody, but we're going to do that as part of this. Um, I'm going to use CRM because I'm familiar with it, and I think that if you're only going to learn one thing, that's a good thing to learn. Uh, I know that there's, there's some other ones out there that are also really good. Uh, we're spoiled for choice right now, at least for Postgres. You also have good documentation. So All right, project setup. We'll need to add CRM with right uh one of the it's basically um, the database driver and the runtime. So the runtime is going to be Tokyo. Uh, Derived features. Okay, then we're also going to want macros. C dash ORM. Oh, last time I ran on this profile, we installed SQLite. And okay, so we have Tokyo. That seems fine, but I want... Do you have a list of the runtimes? No? Database driver. There we go. Okay, so I want Postgres. So SQL X Postgres. Oh, right. I have to do dash F for each of these. Uh, okay, so we have runtime, Tokyo, REST LS, which is REST based driver. So no, no other language nonsense for this. We're going to do full REST. And then Postgres, and then we want macros. Procedural macros for your convenience. So we want macros. I don't think I need to debug print everything, but heck, that that might be a that might not be a terrible idea, especially if there's weird things happening. Uh, we'll probably eventually want with Chrono. But for... Do we even have time right now? I, we have the plan in here, don't we? Uh, let's see. So ID... Int name varchar books and varchar and boolean and int. Okay, so I have no, I have no time. I w I wasn't planning on doing created that or anything else that. So it should be this should be all we need. Okay, so that should be good for us. While that's installing,
we're going to need a dot env which i think we also i vaguely remember creating a dot env somewhere yeah there we go so we have a dot env already let me update that Okay, so right now I only have Postgres password with keyboard cat. You want a specific thing. So it, it wants a database URL. And I think it needs to be database URL. Uh, this is gonna be Postgres username colon password. So uh, Postgres cat. Uh, at now if i run everything out here it'll be localhost if i run it inside of docker it'll end up being something else i'm i'm thinking we'll run it out here and that should be fine work at localhost uh port to and then the database name is postgres okay and then I find it interesting that they they're grabbing out database name here and it's not being used ever. It's just connecting to this database URL. Hmm. All right. Ooh, and then before I quit this, let's write this. Let's also take you and open up our .env example. Uh, where would we want to put this? I've I've experimented with a couple different places to put the connections. I think we want to have like a DB, a database, and then we want to call that, maybe stuff that into the state. I'm looking at here, so we have router. So I have config like that. I don't actually know if it would be that big of a problem to put stuff to just use the config as the state. I think that would be fine. Uh, I want to connect the database inside of here. We can create a database folder. And I'll probably put queries inside of here for each of the, the specific things, but the connection can be in mod, I suppose. Now I haven't updated uh, Rust Analyzer for this week, but I've been having a weird issue. Uh, I'd, I'd be interested to see if it's happening to you all too. When I come here to like mod, for example, it's going to tell me in the upper right that, hey, this is outside of the flow of what we're looking for. And sometimes when I have Rust Analyzer auto update the other files to add it in, uh, yeah, so not included in module tree. So if I basically, hey, do a, a pub, a pub mod DB, it chooses where to put this. Sometimes it puts this into the main file and not the lib file which is what I, I want it to do. I'm curious if it's gonna do that again here. So write all, let's go find 
lib. Yeah, see, it's not here. So there's no mod. And here it put it put it into to main, which is not what I want it to do. I don't want main to really be aware of any of this stuff. So Does that happen to you all? All right, so let's head to mod in here. We're going to create a probably an async function. Yeah, it's going to be an async function to connect to the database. So I'll want the config itself. So just taking the config. And are you going to return a yes, a result? Uh, I need to go to an app config though. And we need to add in we need to add in some of those other things. So we uh the database URL, for example. What else do I have in the dot env? I have the Postgres password, which I do not need. So database URL goes in here like that, uh, which means I need dot .emv, which I don't have here. When coding on my own, I've gotten used to when I add like when I add something new, I need to do the LSP restart. I just go do something else for like, I don't know, a minute, like half a minute. OK, so we have you that. Database URL. I don't think these come in as static strings. I think they just come in as um, stirs. So we're going to do .env. OK, so that gives us access to you. Now we have that here. We can now do this database connect, which gets us pass in the database URL, and then we await that. OK, so. Now, if that gives me a full database connection, I probably want to change this. 
to just be the uh, the connection URL. So this is gonna be the database URI, which is a string. Oh, and this could be, this could be a stir. I could get this directly from the environment variables. Maybe we should do that. Because I can grab you from here. Yeah, that might be better. Okay, so get the database from this, return that. I just run connect here. Uh, we're going to come back to config. We're going to change this. So instead of database URL, I'm just going to make this the database. Call this DB. And you're going to be a database connection. Uh, no need to put it under an option or anything else. And now I have that in here. Uh, expected database connection found. Oh, a future, right. So you need to be async. Oh, and you need to be not just async, you need to return a result. I suppose, I suppose self, no, okay. Wrong result, I want to use the, the other result. I was wondering why, why this was okay. Uh, okay, so you need to be an okay. Uh, Yashard, hello, how are you doing today? There we go. Now we're happy. Uh, and by happy, I mean, now we go to main and fix it. So I run past the config await. Oh, now I have to now I have to match this, right? Because the config app config new, I need to match you as well. Um, let's see, Kukma, hello, good morning. How are you doing today? Uh, what do I think about using extractor body string instead of JSON payload, JSON value to make certa from JSON later? You can handle JSON parsing error case manually and return enum as an error. One variant of enum would be the con conversion. Yes, yeah, so that's definitely something you can do. If you do that, You might want to also double check that the content type is application JSON just to 
I mean, it's if it's your own if it's your own API, it's not like essential. But if it's a public API, you probably want to double check that. Uh, the the JSON one will actually do that sort of checking for you. But besides that, like, I mean, the JSON's there. The JSON extractor is there as a convenience macro. So it's there. It's there to like help you, help you sort of like do that that exact same thing without having to do that exact same thing. What you might want to do is create a middleware that extracts it as the body as a string, and then then you can sort of check it, convert it into the right the right type using sort of JSON. And then put it into an extension, and then that that's what the route handler would extract out. And that's that's where you could put that custom logic there, then. I don't I don't I think that would be a good I think that's a good way of doing that. That's probably what I would do in, in other in other frameworks as well. So thinking thinking about like okay in Express I would I would probably absolutely would use a a middleware to extract it out and sort of double check it make sure it's what I want it to be in Laravel and PHP I would probably use whatever they they have like special guard functions which I forget what the name they are um, I would use one of them which is the equivalent of like middleware that's been you know, it's magic middleware. Um, what other, what other ones? I don't know if there's any other like unique type of frameworks that I've used that aren't, that don't fall into one of those two. When in doubt, and this is something that I found when in doubt, steal the patterns from the big, the big frameworks. So like, like, um, like laravel and php is surprisingly good architecture so you could just steal all of their their ideas and just use that when you're creating something manually i haven't used rocket recently and i haven't used actix web recently and i've heard that they've changed a lot This one I want to exit out of, don't I? Okay, so that gives me the config, which is that config, and now we can go back and run. Now you're working again here, but now we've connected to the database. So that's good. Okay. Now this doesn't seem like the great a great idea to throw in all of this code into main. Oh, and that's a that's a decision. So not only not only every time that our app runs, it will drop the database if it exists and then create the database. I shouldn't have to tell you, but don't ever do this in anything that might even think about seeing production.
That's why they needed the database name here. <laughs> that's why that's why they put the database name. Okay. I was wondering about that. Which they've conveniently lost here. It's no longer no longer in this code. Oh, it's in this dot dot dot. That's probably somewhere above or below this. Okay. Now I've previously installed CRM CLI, but let's um I'm going to reinstall it just to make sure I have the latest version. Uh, Yashard, okay. Um, I want to say, came across the studio called Studio T3 for MongoDB database and database in general on YouTube video. It said that you could use it for simple databases with its GUI. We were looking for insert many options and couldn't find it. For, for Mongo? Um, I want to say that Mongo has an insert menu. Uh, so with Mongo, I would probably go to Mongo's home directory for that. I used Mongo for a while, way back in the day when it was like the new, the new, the new hotness. That was, that was fun. I, I knew somebody who worked there. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to check this out. Um, let's see. Where's the database? Where Where's the documentation? Where do they? Okay, documentation. None of this looks right. Oh, maybe it's for the drivers. What are you using? It okay, it allows you to use MongoDB, but no no GUI options. That should be fine. So it, it basically what that means is it doesn't expose the port for the uh, Mongo has a the normal database port, and then they have the admin port, I believe. And so they're they're not exposing the admin port for you, which is fine. You can do everything that you could do in a GUI in the in the um, command line in the terminal, which is perfectly fine. I don't here. If we go to Rust driver, no. Okay, so I think it. Why does it feel hard to find like the just how 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 to do stuff? Maybe maybe I was but okay, so DP crud operations. Ah, okay, insert documents, insert methods. Okay, so you were asking for you wanted to do a bulk insert many options. So yeah, insert many. Now, as this as this warning is saying, this is uh, this is the database method itself, and so if you're using another language, so whatever language you're using, you're going to use the driver that's going to then use this. So this is like, hey, you can you can do something like this, and this is what you would do inside of the interactive shell. If you wanted to do, if you want to do this, what language are you using? Um, have I heard of these kinds of apps and their usage? Uh, 
Okay, you're using Node.js. Okay, easy enough. So let's go, so resources, we'll go to drivers. There's apparently only one Node.js driver. Uh, do I want, is this it? We have a quick reference. So they have a, okay, that's the, just a bulk write result. Uh, these are all classes, interfaces, types. Interesting. All right, let's, uh, let's see if we can find it. So what was it called again? It was like a bulk insert. Or is insert many, right? So bulk operation base, insert, insert, insert one, insert many. Inserts an array of documents into the doc, uh, MongoDB. If documents passed in do not contain the ID field, one will be added to each of the documents. Okay, so if you're using this driver, you can... And these documents don't even have examples? That sucks. At least they return promises. Oh, okay. So you're using Mongoose. Okay, let's let's go find Mongoose then. Uh, my first my first blind one didn't find it. Okay, so I want to do an insert. Probably insert many. Oh, they, they don't even have an insert. So API replace one, update one. What would it be? Doc okay, so documents. In the part model. Okay, so... Wait, would that be models then? Below API. Create, create collection. Oh, is it? Shouldn't be create, right? Should be insert. Insert many. There we go. Uh, at least this one has examples. Okay, that's nice. So you can have your arrays of of objects and then you can insert many that array. That's not a promise. That's a callback. I don't I don't like that. It returns a promise. Or apparently you can use the callback. I don't like that. All right, but anyways, what's the what's the what's the what's the core question? So we found this. Um, oh, are you thinking about like how you want to insert many if you take like seed the database? So like you want to do like a one-time connection in, and then just insert a bunch of stuff. Is that what you're thinking of?
No, just wanted to do crud app. Okay. Uh, as long as the database exists, as long as you can like connect to it with your app, then you should be able to, with your code in your script, then do your inserts and do your CRUD. So, I mean, that should work. Are you getting errors when you attempt to connect in? It doesn't let you do it. Oh. Okay, studiot3.com. Fine. Um, so all your IDE client and GUI tools for MongoDB on Atlas or anywhere. Based on what I'm see, what what that statement said, I am not convinced they actually provide you a database. Okay, hold on. What? Solutions. Okay, tools. So SQL queries. Yeah, okay, so um I don't think that they, I don't think that T, Studio T3 gives you a database. I think they give you, they give you tools, including a, a GUI tool to connect to a database. Yeah, it's like a connection manager. So I don't, I don't think this is, I don't think this is what you want, right? Because this doesn't actually give you a database uh, whatsoever. But what you probably want, if you go to Mongo's website, they have Atlas. And Atlas is a free, is a free Mongo database in the cloud. Uh, and I believe for Oh, that's weird. They have the sh they have the free one on the right. Usually, it's on the left. So you have a small amount of storage. No credit card even required. That's nice. Free forever. So you can get five hundred twelve half a gigabyte of storage. And it's free online. Also, apparently, they don't know how to. It, it's not compatible with Dark Reader. That that's fun. So, if you get this, then you'll get the connection information, and then you should be able to just connect to into it directly, and you don't need the Studio T three. Uh, you can then push with GitHub. So, well. Where are you pushing to? So this is just the database, right? This is not this is not putting the code anywhere. This is just the database itself. If you want to deploy your code, you will need to look into different deployment options. Uh, an example deployment option might be something like Vercel, Heroku, AWS, Firebase, any of those those could do different types of uh, deployments depending upon if you want front end or back end. Heroku is a good choice. 
I kind of stopped using them uh, a while back, but especially after they got rid of their free tier. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit upset that they don't have that anymore. And I think all of the other ones still have free tiers. So it's like, okay, well, that's an easy choice. And I think CJ and Coding Garden just did a thing on Vercel, right? I, I, I'm trying to remember the name of the, the technology. I think it's Vercel, right? But that allows you to get a free backend application, just like Heroku did. Um, so does that help? You're gonna you're gonna have your database, you're gonna have your mongoose driver, and then you're gonna have your app, and then these be deployed all together. And then together that makes your web application. So hopefully, hopefully that works and gets you going. And if you run into more trouble, then uh, feel free to reach out. All right, that installed all these things in that meantime. Uh, so let's see, we got the CLI updated for that. We are not using Mongo. We are using um, Postgres here. So let's see, see where I'm... We got our database runtime. Okay, so we got you. Okay, so it wants us to do this migrate in it, which Before I do any of this, let's 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 commit all this stuff. Okay, then I want to, I've already installed you. I want to CRM CLI migrate in it. What are you gonna do? Okay, you created a migration folder. Okay, so if we take a look at now our our folder structure we have we have our main app which is at the root here and now we have this migration folder and that has a full rust application inside of that too so we now need to set up if we want to use this we need now set up a workspace in here for that so uh is it workspace or workspaces um with members workspace and workspace members and i forget how that works oh okay so it's workspace with members equals and it's an array okay so workspace members equals and it's array i want um what is this called this was called migration i think migration okay and then dependencies i want migration to be then go into that so i can call it from elsewhere so this is going to be Migration. Uh, Kukma, I missed your message. Uh, hold on, let me go check that again. Oh yeah, I totally missed that. Sorry about that. Uh, while creating route, I'm also trying to create HTTP request to that route. 
Uh, then you have a middleware error and route error. You must somehow automatically merge error variants from both to write expected error type for request logic. It's annoying, but I think useless. Um, conversion from checks it for you. So... Let's see. So basically, we're creating a route. You have to create HTTP request to that route. Then you have a middleware error and route error. You must somehow automatically merge error variants from both to write the expected error type for the request logic. So the the route the route coming in, and then you have your middleware that sort of like sits after it, but kind of runs before it. That, that's always fun. Um, and then you need them all. Well, they don't have to return the same exact thing, I don't think. But it's a good idea for them to return the same thing. Conversion from checks it for you. So, I mean, yeah, if you do that. I guess it depends, like, if you're going to do, like, the middleware stuff, you do have to write a lot more boilerplate, which is not fun. That, that's definitely true. Um, I'm not exactly sure I have more than a comment for that. Did you, was, was there, did you want me to, like, answer something from that, too? Or, like, I don't have, like, it's more of, like, a, yeah, it sucks. And if conversion from is working for you, then then just do that. Uh, do we have to pass in dependencies, or it won't, or won't workspaces pass it down? I think I have to put it in dependencies. I have to I have to pass it in here somewhere. It's impl from plus same naming with proc macro. I mean, if that if that's working then that's that's all you need right then that that gives you what you want to do Not sure I'm happy with the the name that they give you. And you somehow need to write tests for all the expected request view error variants. Yeah, that's a um I think my way to get around that, I mean I guess it's not like really around that is do more integration testing. So have have an have an integration test that sends all the variants that you don't want that you want like how how it should fail and throw that in there and now what i've what i've done in the past with complex json objects that are coming into a a server is do some fuzz testing 
So I randomly created the object. So you know, I have I have the correct shape of the object. Sometimes I also choose not to do the correct shape. And then I have a little bit of code to just determine, okay, is this going to be a success? Should this be successful or should this be an error? And then it, then it sends it off and then says like, Hey, did, did this work the way I expect it to? So yeah, that's like, I had to write all those tests that th those tests was quite a lot, but that system has been up and running. I haven't had to touch it in years because it's just been stable. And that's that's what the power of those tests give you, especially with fuzz testing where it's all random. So therefore, I I hit I hit a lot of. I remember early early on when I was writing this thing. And this is all for my work. This, I did I did none of this on YouTube, so you'll never find it there. It was all for private private office and work. Uh, it was it was good. Oh, thank you, Kukma. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad it's helpful. I'm not happy with the name of this migration. So the name of the file is create table. Is it is there a is there a command to probably not change it. So if I go to migration. Yeah, so okay, we have in there M2020. Is that the date? M2022010100001. Create table. That feels like an example that they left in, but I kind of don't want the example left in there. I kind of want to remove that and create a new one. Can I do that? Okay, generate a new empty migration direct. A new empty migration. Okay. That's what I want to do. I want to do the create a new one. So generate. Then I can do the migration name. Okay, so. Then the migration name, we're going to create. I think it was authors. We're working on authors. So create authors. There we go. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Creating that. Wait a second. Where did you create that? Oh, no. Hold on, I'm now really confused. So there's that create table. So I want to create a migration and then just that. But this should be migration sor wait. Migration source that. If your migrations are in their own crate, you can provide the root of that crate. If your migrations are in a submodule of your app, you should provide the directory of that submodule module. Okay, so maybe I don't need to do this. Let's try this again. Create authors. 
Oh, okay. So it figured it out. So it. And now put the creator authors in there. Great. Uh, which it did give me an example to start with here. So that's good. So I want to remove that create table. Um, and that causes an error because I think there was a main in migrations. No. Yeah. Oh, in, in library. Okay. So you, hmm. I'm not super happy about this. Now I played around with this on my own a little bit. It's what, what I'm mostly unhappy about is the fact that when we create a migration, I have to create the file, so that's great. And then I have to come into here and I have to tell the migration runner about the file, and then I have to add that into a, a vector, which sets three actions for every migration that I create, which, which seems... I've never seen that in any of the other frameworks that I've ever used. So like using something, using like bookshelf with, uh, with node, you just put the, you just put the things into the directories and it just automatically finds them and runs them. That's kind of what I wanted to go here. I'm surprised they don't have like a macro to like load up and, and have this all work magically for me. So I'm a little bit sad about that. I could write a macro probably to do this and like set up this file for me, but I kind of feel that I shouldn't be the one having to do that. But we're gonna we're gonna move forward. We'll just be annoyed and it'll be fine. Okay, so we have this. Let's go to our migration. I want to create the table. So um, uh, replace the sample below with your own migration scripts. And is this an example of that? Every single migration tool goes in order by date. They really did drop the ball on that one. They, exactly. That, that's the idea. Like, And uh, not only that, not only that, they literally have the date format in the name here so there's no reason they can't do the exact same thing like it's already set up just for just for that purpose they even have what looks like to be the milliseconds so even if i create it on the same day it's going to be unique each millisecond that i create the migration at so i don't know this feels like they invented a new a new way of doing it when there's a standard already okay so they have this as an example we can do something up here maybe so they show us we can do this manager Uh, we can create a table. Okay, so create a table, and then we'll have table create. Okay, so table create. I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, it's, it's like creating this in Rust, which is it's nice because it's typed. It's also kind of annoying because Rust in this way makes it a little bit annoying. Um, this is a lot more code than. I would get out of something else. Okay, so table. Um, now that's interesting. Okay, so post table. Where does post and table come from? Oh, here. Mm, okay, so.
This is an author. Interesting the order of this. So table ID title text. Okay, and we can learn more here. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a super fan of of this. Um I'm looking forward to so like the the plan is we're going to we're going to be doing CRM to begin with. The plan is for me to follow up uh and then eventually create little courses uh for the other database connectors. And then, then we can like check them all and decide which ones we like because you you can then like pick and choose. Like you don't want to use CRM, that's okay. Get the other micro course and shove that in instead. Okay, so to create a character table with column ID, character font size. Oh, so it's, we're doing like a type table. So it always starts with table. Okay, so this is gonna be an author. So table, we have an ID and looking through this, we're gonna have just a name then. And now I want that to be probably tables authors because I'm, I'm of the camp that the name of the table should be plural. And that that's it. Like then each each row is is one of those things. The website is like JavaScript. The website is a million times better than trying to read the docs. Oh, you know what? They sent me to the docs, but yeah, you're right. I should come here. I wish in those cases they sent me to the um the website like they had they had a they had a URL there. They should have just sent me to the website. Okay. So that gives me this. Now I can use and come back up to here and we're going to say, "All right, so we have table and inside of this table it's going to be not post because we have the authors table. Oh, okay. So I'm building this out one of these. So table, if not exists, and then we can have each of the columns that were created from the here too. So we have a call. I'm doing a column definition new. So column definition new. We do a post, no, an article, an author's ID. Yeah, I see now. It's this one here. So we're going to do is, right? 
Call open here, close here. So call them def new post ID huh, dot integer. Not null. Auto increment. Okay. I don't think it found any problem with my code. Oh, primary key. I. You're a function. Okay, so there's that. And then there was one more, which was the name, right? Yeah, then the name, so. Oh. Nope, did not want the query. We're not doing query stuff here. Okay. Column def uh, new. It's gonna be authors name. Uh, I want you to be a of the string. So that would be this one here, so string. I bet I could pass in, oh, I probably can't. How do I say how long it's gonna be? Do you not have like a varchar? I mean, okay, I'm okay with a string. I wonder if that's gonna be text or not. Uh, and let's see, not, let's make that not null too. Um, and then interesting, two owned at the end. And so out of here, we then do an await. And then you're done. Okay, what are you upset about? No column named in the current screen. Go. Okay. What did I miss? So we have calm def new. Uh, this includes the prelude. Oh, did I pull in the wrong one? Did I not need to do that column def there? Oh, that's what it was. I pulled in a different column def that I didn't want to have. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so that makes you happy. That's up, then down. Same, same exact thing here, so... We have a manager drop table. We do table drop table. This is going to be authors table. So drop that table. Okay, there. Now, if I run this migration. I could run up here.
the connection string Postgres keyboard cat local host. Okay, so it has no supporting driver. Interesting. Um, now I'm in. Do I have to be in migration? Oh, interesting. Okay, so when I do a, a migrate up, cargo run manifest path migration cargo tumble. Oh, so it's it's looking for that. Okay. Oh, interesting. So it's yelling at me that there's. Postgres has no supporting driver. Don't I have a don't I have a driver installed? So in here we have CRM features. This should tell it what the driver to use, right? Okay, hold on. Let's go. Let's continue looking at the documentation. I I did this actually before. I I ran these on my own, uh, and I got it working, and I forget how I got it working. It's in a different profile. Okay, so perform all the migrations through C or MCLI. Make sure you're running this at the root, at the project root. Um, wait, wait, you don't have an example? Oh, you do have an example. Oh, weird. This didn't feel like an example. This felt like code. So you're setting this environment variable in the command. That's not a good, don't do that. Please don't do that. No supporting driver. Uh, let's double check that we can connect in. So if I do PSQL, uh, U Postgres host for localhost 5432. Oh, maybe it's not. No, I'm I'm in. Okay, so the database is up. I'm able to connect in. Oh, you know what? Uh, do I need like a database? So database Postgres. Nope, that's still working. Okay, so. You're trying to run this. You have no supporting driver. Fail to acquire database. Oh, because I don't have this set up in the environment variable. Okay, hold on. That's why they're doing that. Oh, that that's, that's, uh, I don't like it. Um, main. No, other main. Um, you main. So you run that. Okay, so I want. Am I going to have to have an environment variable for this? You're going to make me have to have an environment variable. No, 
No, I can use dot. I can use dot. Okay, we're going to use, we're going to go. We're going to migration main. I have dot envy, so. I can't add you in here, can I? I have to do that from. Um, yeah, so stacking, uh, it's, I don't think it's that. I think it's, so it's, I need to make sure that the .env is being loaded up in red, and I don't think it is. So I need, I need to tell it about the .env file. Well, the, the thing that's surprising to me is that in in the CLI tool, having the .env file works. Like, it, it, it detects that and it reads it. Here, it doesn't. So I'm kind of surprised they don't have any code to say, hey, if there is a .env file, just load it up. Use it. So I'm going to do a cargo add... To the macro. I actually don't know if I need the macro. Okay, so dot env loads the dot env file from the current directory or its parents this is typically what you want. Okay, from my parents too. An error will be returned if the file is not found. So, and that's that's fine. So here's what we do. In here we do a dot env. dot in v um we can if let error Ah, nope, stop. Error. And then we'll just do an early return. Okay, so if I if I run you now. So I want to do an up. What? The way? Serum so migrate up. Running. Target debug migration up, and then it hands me this. In the output, which is also not cool. If you must write logic in the library, not a binary, then .env file will not work. Yeah, but you can handle that, right? Uh, you can you can state if the .env file doesn't exist, then then do this instead. Like th those are those are options. But then again, this is not a library, right? This has a main, and so I'm putting this into the main. So. That to me is helpful too. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised and annoyed that it's okay. I, I think I didn't notice this before. This, this was happening. It was right. 
so yeah, this was happening and I didn't notice. I didn't really think about this. So it, it actually is seeing the dot in V. You don't know about the connection strings. I have to, I have to add the other one. So we have to do cargo add that here. No, that didn't work. Uh, Flint Rusty, hello. How are you doing today? Do I do exercise every day? Like actually like physical go out and exercise every day? I should. I'm supposed to. I don't. I am. Um, so I, I want to. Uh, I want to. I want to get back into it. At one point in time, I did jogging. And there's some there's some good places to go jog around. Uh, I also do bike riding. Um, but yeah, we, we sit down at the desk far too often. I don't excise Zilby as much as he deserves too. So it's not just me who suffers. It's now, now all of us suffer here. Okay. So I installed SQL X Postgres. That should work it right. Has no supporting driver. I don't see anything else in here for that. Do a do a gym stream. Oh no, nobody wants to see me doing a gym stream. The the closest that I might ever come is to go see if I could join uh CJ on a hike. That would be that would be the closest that I'd be ever willing to do for that. I have no idea where those are too. Like, I uh, I don't know how far I'll have to drive to get there. Walk on a treadmill while coding. I have considered that. Yeah, CJ from Coding Garden. No, not the Binance founder. I do not know the Binance founder. I, I don't, I would, yeah, it's like, oh yeah, just like some random founders. I, I'll just, I'm just going to go bother them. Would you like, Hey, we're taking a walk now. You're, you're done for the day. Yeah. Like, you know, a couple days I'm thinking I'll go, I'll go grab Slack. And then after that, maybe we can go to Oracle after that. Yeah, we can we can hit up Google. Get all the founders to go on a hike. All right. Google time. Something I just realized, my monitor is at an angle. That's not. Yeah, I don't know if I've been like tilting my head the entire time or not. Okay, when well, trying to initialize my database with some starting migrations to get the error, the connection string, blah, 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 has no supporting driver. Well, that sounds familiar. Okay, so this is answered. Okay, this was it. Okay. 
So wait a second. Uh, so they have this serum version. Okay, so SQL X Postgres, runtime that, macros, default features. Okay, so that's correct. You need it structure the cargo workspace also. Wait a second. Really? Here it is. So I have to enable at least one async runtime and database driver feature if you want to run migrations via CLI. So for example, That sounds, yeah, these two are what I want. So when I did the migrate in it, I sort of feel that it should either force me to say which ones to do or should like enable these ones or have like instructions coming out to say, like on the, the CLI to say, hey, go, go update this. Like literally won't work unless you do this. Okay, applying migration. So we should be able to see this now. So I should be able to do a PSQL. We connect in. Uh, we do a DS, I think, for authors. Okay, we can see we have this ID, uh, integer, not null, and it's a... Um, it's an auto incrementing variable. And then we have name, character varying. Okay, so that is a varchar. So it didn't use text as its type. I can't see how many that is. So if I can't see that, to me, that means 255 characters, which isn't a problem. It'd be nice to know a little bit more about how to like really enforce that, but okay, we're good. And then it created an uh, index for an author for the ID, which is also, I think it automatically does that. So good to know. So that worked, which means now we can create the rest of these. So we have authors. I now want books. Oh, and on top of that, we can do Uh, CRM, I want to migrate, generate, so create authors, this can create books. And then I also want to create the book authors. Okay, so we're going to have a table ID uh, for our books. We're going to have ID, name, price, and in stock. So ID, name, price, and stock. Okay, so create table, table create. This is going to be any time that we have a post. This is now a books. Okay, so books table, if not exists, 
column definitions. Okay, so we have new ID, primary, uh, auto increment, primary key. Um, next up would be name. Uh, that's going to be a string, not null. Okay. Then uh, price is... Now, I'm thinking about doing these in pennies. So it wouldn't be a string. This would be an integer. Is there... There's a U size in... Oh, you won't tell me? Okay, hold on. So we have integer. Okay, fine. We'll go look it up. I was hoping that the auto that the uh, autocomplete would find it for me, uh, but I think this is the problem about so many macros is that uh, Rust Analyzer is falling down. Okay, so create table. Yeah, so integer here, decimal for float. Uh, do you have a list of the types? No. Okay. This is under create column def. Let's go look at the real the the doc docs. Okay, so do column def new. I don't see a new on this, which makes this is not the right column def, is it? No definition found. Okay, so this is off of the prelude. So, uh, no. No definition found for column def? Okay. Yeah, Rust Analyzer is not happy with this. Um, okay, so this is okay, so this is the arm entity prelude. Oh, I need migration prelude. That's what it is. Uh, so column def. Query entity error. None of the above. So C or M um, migration. Column 
column def. Here it is, CRM migration prelude column def. Here's new, that gives me a column def, which is that thing, okay. Okay, okay, so which is the same thing. Got it. Uh, which then... Uh, Okay, sets column type is Boolean, so now we can look through here, so. Yeah, Rust Analyzer can't handle macros, which is another reason why I'm not a fan of these deeply nested macros for the whole migration stuff. Yeah, it's, um, if it was normal Rust, I think I would be happier with that. I think it's like pretending to be normal Rust, which makes it worse. Um, okay, so I want you to be an unsigned integer. Oh, and I can do unsigned. So set column type is unsigned. Here we go. So unsigned. Um, we'll make this not null two. That's fine. And two owned. And then I think that's it, right? Oh, no, then we have in stock. It's so unhappy. It's not giving me any help whatsoever, even on stuff that's like inside of this crate or inside this file. Uh, in stock, this is gonna be a Boolean. I bet I could do default. Ooh, how do I do default? Default and value T, okay. So default, uh, false, we don't have it in stock. Okay, I mean, I think that's gonna work. So you're happy and then we're gonna drop you, so drop table, table chop, books table, okay. And then, oh, I know why this doesn't give me any help whatsoever. In the migration, we need to tell it about this because of course we do. So we need to do mod. This is create books. I have to box it up myself too. I really do like the um, the analogy here is I have to it. This is almost like I have to go into the library or the store like I, I the store I'm buying my my books at. Uh, I'm buying my migrations from this store and they're going to make me choose which migration I want. Write the migration, put it into the box, box it up, and then I can carry it out with me. File modified, what? Uh-oh. Who modified you? I reset, reset. Um, okay, so what, what happened? Did it, oh, did it update that for me? That would have been... Oh, it did. Okay. All right. It's spicy, but I'm upset at it. That's why. That's why I'm spicy. Like this is this is as upset as I usually get. I just start getting like mean, um, as opposed to like yelly. But um, okay, slightly like a slight better thing. When I do the migration create with the CLI, they update this file and add in the mods and add add them to the vector.
which is really interesting. Are they are they just regenerating this file every single time, or are they are they doing something? Are they just like parsing through and adding one line at a time? I would hope that they're regenerating the entire file. But interesting. Okay, so I don't need to do this. Uh, that will just work. With, but then again, if that just works... This should have just worked, right? It should it should see this. Okay, so this is gonna be book authors. Now this one's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna have an author ID and a book ID, and those are both gonna be primary keys together. So we're not gonna have an ID. We're gonna have an author ID and a book ID. So everywhere we have post, I want that to become book authors. Okay, and we'll we'll deal with you in a second. So table create. Create the table if it doesn't exist. Um we don't need the ID at all. Uh, but this is going to be the author ID. Uh, you're going to be an integer. You cannot be null. You're not going to be an auto increment, but you are going to be a primary key. Now, in Postgres, you can have a you can have a primary key that spans two columns. So that's what I'm hoping we can do here. So column new. You're going to be book ID. Integer, not null. Oh, now you're helping me. Now I get all the help I want. Oh, rest analyzer. Now that I don't need the help anymore, Rust Analyzer is really, really happy. Okay, so you're running there. Okay, let's let's try running our, our migration again. Multiple primary keys for table book authors are not allowed. Okay, so it it is possible to do primary key two primary keys in Postgres, but you uh, when creating it when creating it normally you have to do a like primary keys parentheses and then like um, the two columns together. So it's like a single primary key over two columns, which I'm not, I wonder how that's gonna work. So I want this in migration. I don't think that's either of those are really helping.
I don't see anything here about um, migrations at all. Like, well, I guess some of them maybe, but not helpful. Uh, let's let's try this. So this wouldn't be on the column. This would be when I'm doing the table create. So if I remove you and remove you, we can do primary key, add a primary key. That's what it is. Index create. Okay, then I do an index create, and then I can add in the multiple columns. So index create call. Uh, so then we're gonna have um, book authors author ID. Book authors, book ID. Okay, so that's how I that's how I do it. There it is. That's how I do it. Okay. And I suppose we can connect in and take a look at it again. All right, so I want a DS. So we have um, we have our authors. We have our books. And our book authors. And the primary key is author ID and book ID. Okay, so that seems to be that seems to work just fine. It's a little bit odd syntax, but it uh, it works. It's serviceable. Um, so let's see. That was that. My, I have a quick message I need to respond to quickly. Sorry about that. All right. Um, okay, so. That creates the tables, the table, and all the connections together. Uh, so that's that's the migrations. We're we're good. Which means, what's next? If we have the migrations, uh, I want to. I don't necessarily need to see it at this point. We need to. We need to do an insert. So I need a connections. This is all migration stuff, right? Oh, I need to do the entities. Okay, so CRM, CLI. We could generate the entity. I have to tell it. Where to generate them. I'm, I'm surprised I can't do like an in it like I can in. Um, in the migrations. I want entity CLI.
Okay, so migration. I'm okay with not doing the migrations. Although it'd be interesting to do this. You could you could throw in the migrations to every time that the server runs, it runs the latest migrations, which isn't that's actually I don't hate that. I, I think that that's fine. Uh if you're ever using something like Axum inside of a like a Docker container that can be that can be run, this is not necessarily a bad thing to do. Okay, so we have the CRM CLI. I want to generate the entity. I guess I'll keep that up. Let's create a new, a new one of these. All right, what are you going to do? I already have the database URL because it's part of the .env that I have. Um, how did I get here? It's a good question. How did I? Oh, I just clicked on getting started. I... Wait, did I? Where did I click on? How did I get here? Did I click on tutorial? Oh, I clicked on tutorial. That must have been what it was. Where does it tell me that I'm supposed to create the entity create because there that that entity creation command is assuming that there's a full crate there. Getting started should link you to the website version of the docs. So here, if I come back to here, getting started sends me here. So that's fine. Okay, these are all sort of just the index of it. That's fine. Um, tutorials and examples, but we're not going to use those. No, I don't want to stop it, but like it's assuming that it already exists. Well, okay. It feels like it's assuming that it's already existing. Oh, here it is. In migration section, setting up migration, it wants me to now set up the entities. I feel like this section should probably be down here, right? Oh, and they don't have a, okay, interesting. They don't have an init command for it. Well, 
Interesting. And this should just be a library. Okay, so we're going to do a cargo new lib entity. Are they suggesting? Yeah, they're suggesting entity. Um, am I sure that the command isn't a full init? Because uh, they don't have a command here. Entity create. Create an entity. Create an entity create in your root workspace. Uh, they don't have a command here. That's what it's going to look like. Specify the CRM dependency. And that's it. That, 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 that's all. Okay, so I add that in there. Uh, we need a lib.rs and a... Okay, so we need a lib.rs and then it's going to create these. Doesn't tell me what these are supposed to be. After generating the entity files, you can re-export the generated entities by adding the following lines in the source lib.rs. Mod entities, hub use entity. Okay, so after generating the entity, entities file. So now I come down here and do very, very interesting. Output directory. Okay, so where I want to put it. So We're gonna do this. Um, output. Okay, so output directory is gonna be entity source i think okay so it generates those so in source mod we have this so PubMod Prelude, PubMod Authors, Book Authors, Books. And then we have like a Prelude. That's really confusing. I think I want to move the lib to mod. Uh, someone did screw up the order. They expect you to follow the guide from the root intro, which jumps you around the docs. Ah, okay. They expect you, they expect this to be your guide around. So what is that? That's the setting up migration. Yeah, yeah. So set up migration. So I thought that, but this doesn't tell me to run 
So migrate in it. Create the migrations and then just create this. So we have libraries posts and then they say, okay, after My, write the migration, run it to create tables and database. Finally, generate CRM entities with CR or MCLI and output the entity files to entity source entities folder. Oh, um. That's the problem. I didn't do it. I didn't do that right. Okay, so I was supposed to put that entity source entities. That's that's what it was. Okay. So entity source. I'm Oh fun. Okay, so in entity, I wonder if I can just delete this. Um let's remove entity source. All right, so we have book authors. Let's just see the into it. So yeah, book authors, books, not the lib, uh, the mod and the prelude. And authors. Let's try this again. Um, Aether345, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, you've never developed with Rust before. What's the development GUI? Uh, it's like terminal and steroids. Yeah, so uh, it, you don't have to do this with with Rust. Uh, this, so this is, um, I could do, I could do like the, the, the setup that I have right now works with any type of programming. I do web dev with it too. So JavaScript, TypeScript, um, HTML, CSS, all the fun stuff. There's two sort of sections to this. Uh, first is um, this entire thing, all the windows, the you know the terminal on steroids, that is called Zellige. And so Zellige basically allows me to create uh, new tabs. And this is like what a basic one looks like. So Zellige gives me this here, uh, these down here, I can create floating windows, I could even um, move them around if I want, uh, create multiple of them and do whatever I want. That's that's one thing. Now, the other thing is um, the editor itself, and that's called Helix. And that's very similar to Vim. It's um, its, its own uh, terminal editor, command line editor. Uh, and so I can do, it's like, if you ever used Vim, it's very much similar to that. I can move around with the Vim keys. Uh, there's some differences. I can do like space F and that opens up a file picker. And then I can just go find files and then do whatever I want to do with them. Um, but like when you see me doing things like this, I'm doing control P W, which opens up the floating windows, which is Zellige. Uh, and then I'm sort of working with that. You're a huge Vim fan yourself. You've been working a lot with Linux, but Zellige looks awesome. Zellige is pretty awesome. I like it so far. I have not tried all their features yet. Supposedly, with Zellige, I can I can use like multiplayer if I have a bunch of people SSH'd into the same thing, um, which is really cool, but I've never had the chance to really use that for real. But that seems like it'd be fun. Um, and then Helix, Helix is one of those things, like, I would take a look into it. It, I like it a lot. Um, the, the potentially the biggest reason to look into Helix, let's go to this tab, it's empty. If I go to config, Helix, these are my only configurations. So I have two of these configurations here. And if I take a look at them, this is the full config that I have for Helix, and I get all those things uh, with it. Um, and it just is working for me. 
and also languages. So telling Helix how the languages work. It does use Toml as a as a configuration file, so you can't you can't make it use something else. You're gonna have to use Toml, unfortunately. I know, I know. I would have preferred it to be something else. I'm not the biggest fan of Toml. Like I think, to to me. This entire syntax is really confusing to me and it breaks my brain when I'm trying to think about how the end result looks in JSON format. Whereas something like YAML is just JSON without, it's like it's Python version of JSON really. Uh, and that that's a lot easier for me to sort of like see how things are gonna to work. Well, okay, so Zellige is, is, Helix is the replacement for Vim. So here, let me, let's, let's open up. So we have Zellige. This is the terminal multiplexer workspace. That's the window manager. And then Helix is the Vim replacement. And I'm, I'm using them both together. And I know it can get a little bit confusing because when you're together, it's like, okay, which things, which things, which, and what are, what is being used? But yeah, like you, you could basically continue using Vim as you are right now with Zellige and that should work just fine. Um, all right, what was I doing? Oh, right, we're gonna try this again. We're gonna do, we're gonna generate this, but instead of going to source, we're gonna go to, output the entity files to entity source entities. So entity. T's like that. Okay, so now. Okay, so put it in there. So we have mod. So then it wants me to come here and do pub. Oh, mod. Okay, so I mod the entities. So mod entities. Pub use entity star. Okay, so pub use. Whenever I don't get autocomplete, I'm I get worried. Yo, look at that. Okay, Rust analyzer is. A little bit unhappy. Oh yeah, no worry about the confusion. It's it's easy to get all these confused. Okay, so that gives me the entities. Async job is still failing. That's cool. Try rerunning our server, make sure it still works. Okay, so server's still working. Database is up. We have entities now, which means that I should be able to create a new thing. Um, all right, so that is in my router author. You're not doing anything to get in here, so I'm Okay, so in my test author, I'm creating a new author. So 
The types are in tests. Okay, so that's good. So I need... I need a new author type. That's going to have just the, the name of the author. Okay. So I just need... I need a struct with a name for JSON coming in for the create author. Where do I want to put that? I could put it as types. We can create a types somewhere. So in our own source, we have that router, we have the DB. I could put just a types in the, the root of that. You know what I probably want to do is create like a types folder. And then I can have something like author and mod in there. Like incoming. Yeah, that might be better. So that's CDN. Okay, CDN to source. Let's create a types. And let's also create. Okay, so this is going to be for author Okay, so this is going to be the incoming author for creating a new one. So this is um, create author JSON, maybe? I have Surday, right? I have to have Surday. I do. Okay, I have Surday with the drives. Okay, so I think the only thing that we're getting in here is the name, right? So that'll be a string. So we get that. We're gonna head back to the router author. I'm gonna take this in as JSON. Okay, so we create that, we get our new author. We also need the state, which is that create app. Um, okay, so in main, we get our config, which is that app config, which now has the database connection in it. We pass that into run here. Uh, so that takes in our config. Um, I need to pass that config into Create router. So let's just do that. And we'll take in a state which implements app config. And so we have a router new route. Oh, you know what we probably want to do is have tower HTTP handling all this stuff. Um, before I do that, let's also do a with state. Okay, so hand you there. You're happy? Why are you not happy? 
Um, oh, oh, because the state, okay, app config needs to implement clone. That's what it is. Okay, so that makes you happy and you're compiling. Um, we are missing tracing stuff. What? No, not full screen. Um, ah, stop. The one thing with all the with all the things, all the terminals like Zellige and Helix, uh, if I miss key anything, really fun stuff starts happening really fast. Um, okay, so I have tracing. I have tracing subscriber. I don't have tower HTTP. Okay, so we need to fix that. We'll bring in trace. And this is going to be router mod. Okay, so we have with state, let's do the tracing here. So we'll create a layer with tower HTTP trace. Trace. Layer. Ooh, which one was it? Um, oh, there it is. New for HTTP. Okay, so now you're unhappy. New for HTTP takes one argument. Do you? Uh, zero arguments were supplied. Um, oh, oh, trace, like I have to do something new and then, then I can do this. So it's, I'm missing something in here. Maybe it's like either new or layer that. Uh oh, uh, we had it. Um, maybe it's new. Now it takes two arguments. Okay, that's that's definitely not right. Oh, I I, I mixed it up. Um, okay, fine. Hold on. Tower HTTP trace trace layer new for HTTP. That's okay. That's what it is. Our HTTP trace. Trace layer. New for HTTP. There we go. Okay, so now, now this should be fine and happy. Uh, do I have any recommendation courses for building Play right from scratch using TypeScript. No, I don't. I've never, I've, I haven't built a playwright from scratch. I've always just used the playwright binary that I could install. Hmm. Is that even possible? What What is playwright written in? So normally, how do they want you to install it? Uh, they want you to install it with NPM 
or yarn or npm pm which is just basically npm with some fun stuff in there uh they don't even mention okay so maybe on their github they have it yeah if you just want to use it as a consumer where you're just using playwright i would recommend installing it with npm so you'll need rest and you know, you'll need rest no you need javascript You'll need Node installed and uh, to just do it like npm install that. That being said, if you go to their GitHub, I bet there's a way for you to compile it from scratch for contributing. You still need Node for this, but then you can grab out Playwright, install dependencies, then you can build it, and then you can test it. So this should, this I believe gives you the information for how to build it from scratch, if that's what you really want. Is it a GitHub-based testing tool? No, Playwright. Uh, Playwright's super interesting. It's a GUI integration. Well, it's not just GUI. It's GUI and CLI integration testing tool for headless browsers. So uh, think of like you could spin up a version of Chrome or Firefox or Safari and uh, in headless mode. So it works in CI CD. And then it, it then will like do the clicky clicks. Uh, it'll do all the things you normally do uh, as a user. Uh, that's what you're telling it to do, like commands and programming to like test the functionality of the, the web application. Absolutely, yes. So it tests everything. And because it's testing the browser, that will hit all the APIs. So you can use it as end-to-end -end testing if you want to, or you can use it as just integration testing for the front end. Uh, because you can also intercept all the requests and not have it actually go to the real APIs. So it's it's up to you. Does it use WebDriver like Selenium? Good question. I think that it does use WebDriver for the Chrome version, and then it does everything else for the other browsers. I want to say that, but I could be wrong. doesn't say the driver. My guess is it's hidden. It's hidden away enough that as a user, we don't need to know it. So the answer is, I don't know, but my guess is yes and. <laughs> yes and. Which do I like more, Cypress or Playwright? After, okay, so I've used Play, I've used Cypress for years. And in the LMS project, I decided to use Playwright to sort of get used to it and see it. Uh, so that way when we do our, when I do a course on front end, which testing framework do I want to teach? And right now it's Playwright. I think uh, Playwright added in this UI here, which basically gives you all of the abilities of Cypress, which is really nice. And so it, it made it kind of feel that I don't really need Cypress anymore. Your Cypress is going to stop getting support soon. I can't imagine that Cypress is going to get stop getting support unless they're going to come out with a new version. They're too big right now to just up and do that.
my guess. And also, this is like they're literally making money for that. So like, I can't imagine that they would stop support for it unless they're going to provide something else for it. Because that's literally their business. And they're making a lot of money from that. So I would say that if somebody's claiming that there's there's not going to be uh, Cyprus in the future, that's that's just wishful thinking. There's one contest that makes you feel so dumb right now, the Shadow Dom. What about it makes you feel dumb? Like... Is that supposed to be like that? Is that my is that my dark reader screwing up? Yes, it's my dark reader screwing up. Um, what's the uh Oh, how to get the X path when the Shadow Dom is turned on? Hmm. What are you trying to get into? Um with with things like React? Shadow Dom is being used. With you, Shadow Dom is being used. With like some of the new the new frameworks, it's not using a Shadow Dom at all. Sylvie turned his head upside down for like half a second. Which is the cutest thing ever. Oh, right. You're right. Virtual and shadow. Okay, I keep on getting the two com mixed together. Virtual and shadow DOM. So yeah, virtual DOM. Virtual DOM. So React, you are virtual DOM. You know, I forget. I forget about the shadow DOM and how that works. So unfortunately, I can't help there. It's been forever since I've used it. I think I used it once. Um, okay, so I added you in, so now we have that, so let's keep on going in. We're going to go into our router author. So I have my new author here. We have our entities. So what I want to do is I want to create, I want to now insert a, I want to insert a new author into the database. I'm thinking that in in source in DB I put queries in here and we'll have like a uh, a queries for I guess authors and other stuff Well, absolutely. Thank you, Aether, for uh, stopping by. Um, I am, so I, I mostly do my streams in the morning before I head to work myself. Uh, in fact, we're probably going to get started. Uh, we're probably going to stop in around five minutes or so. I usually stream until 845 or so in the morning. And I start at 6 a.m. Mountain Time. So it uh, gives a decent amount of time each day. But obviously, if you're over here in the States, that's really early for almost everybody. So, all, uh, most of you, I would assume, are on the other side of the world than me. Yeah, for me, it's um, I do this stuff in the morning before work because that's when I'm at my strongest. And uh, I want I want to spend this time on like on this and hanging out with you. And if I was streaming in the evening, I would not, I we would probably just be playing games or something. Not, not, not doing work. Um, okay, so let's, let's see if we can like at least set up the beginnings of a query beforehand. So we're going to go into source DB. So we have this there. Let's do, I already have query. Let's maybe just create a file for it. So this is going to be authors 
We, oh, we could do author queries. Now we're gonna have to have like async and everything else. Uh, thank you, Aether. Uh, Stacking, you're the complete opposite. The early morning you feel like you get into a fight with Mike Tyson and they have multiple concussions. As someone who has had a concussion and probably multiple, uh, that's not that's not cool. <laughs> that's not uh, concussions. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean because it's that fuzzy feeling in your brain where nothing works. Um, I've even gotten that point where like sometimes in the morning I wake up and like my eyes don't focus right. And so it's like, I guess I need glasses now. And then everything like eventually slowly gets into uh, focus as I re eventually my body remembers how to actually manipulate my eye so those are all those are all fun i know exactly what you mean with that though um okay so i'll do a pub function this is gonna be an insert author you're gonna be an async so pub async function uh we're gonna take in a create author JSON. So that's going to be that name. Ooh, but we're going to return something else. So we need to go back into that types now. For author. We're going to have a pub struct, um, like a DB author. A created author maybe just like an author so we'll have a pub ID which is an i64 and we'll have a pub name which is a string and I don't remember if this needs to implement serialize or deserialize so we're going to find out Uh, we need to return a result, I'm sure, with a author. And I'll throw a to-do in here. Okay, insert author. So first thing I need to create, let, um... I think it's going to be let mute. Uh, this is going to be an active author. So author model, a new author. Oh, I vaguely, uh, I vaguely remember how this works. We're going to do entity, entity authors active model default okay so that gives me a default active model i want to set the name on this so new author name is going to be equal to what was i thinking about this this isn't how you take in something uh this is going to be the um create author is that create author dot name. Okay, so I set that up. Then we save this so that created author, new author. Is it saved? Insert the model primary key is not set, otherwise update. Okay. So save, oh, then we can need the database and all that other stuff. So if I if I leave you as it is, we have plenty of errors, which will let us know what we want to do next. Why is default as an error? Multiple applicable items in scope. Well, fun time. So we're gonna have to 
deal with that next time. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and write all. A lot of things have updated here. But that's mostly because we created two new crates inside of this and we created a workspace. But I think everything's happy in here. Uh, so we have created migrations. What? Just. Created, created migration. Created migrations, and this seems like it's a bug from Zellage here. Uh, that was like around here that ended, which feels to me like it was the original size of this pane, and I increased the size, but it like, it's I'm losing, I'm losing stuff. I'm sure it's still there. So created migrations and entities. Now uh, creating insert author query. Yeah, that that did what I expected. OK, so we're good to go there. Okay, so I can quit all of you. You're good here. Okay, you're all happy. Nope. And there we go. Okay, we're we're all we're all good. So, um, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I do these streams on weekday mornings, except when something happens, like I can't get sleep the night before, which is why I didn't stream on Friday. But uh, assuming that doesn't happen again, uh, I'll be back tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for a full stream. So until around this time, again, we'll be working on this uh, project still. It's um, this is like the biggest of the assessments that we've got so far, but uh, so far things are going relatively smoothly. Uh, we've created those entities and we're going to be working on finishing the query up for inserting and creating the route and making that test pass. So with that, have a great rest of your day and uh, I will see you next time. Bye.